Hello Year 11 and welcome to your second and final lesson on Swanage. Um, to begin with, a bit of retrieval practice here. You have nine questions. Your target using the points at the bottom is to get to 15 points at least. Write your answers down. You have 10 minutes. Pause the video now. OK, so please check through your answers. Uh, award yourself points if you got anything uh, correct and anything you did not get correct or anything you left blank. Could you note down the extra information you could have written? Spend a few minutes doing this and pause the video again. OK, so we are still looking at our example of coastal landforms at Swanage. Today, we're going to be practicing some more than survey skills uh, and some other skills just to become, again, more familiar with this part of the world. This example, we've got, um, yeah, more of a skills based lesson today. So copy the title down and read through the objectives and we'll move on and get started. So a little reminder here about four and six figure grid references, usually the skill that most people find most challenging, especially six figure grid references. Four figure really is very simple. So just to remind you, you will notice if we look at this map here uh, or this grid here uh, underneath, this would be a map. We've got numbers on the left here and we've got numbers at the bottom, all of them moving um, sequentially up uh, 55, 56, 57 and so on and going up 83, 84, 85, 86. And these mean that each line is assigned a number. So anything on this line is on line 85. Um, so to work out a four figure grid reference, the rhyme we always use is along the corridor and up the stairs. So you go along the corridor, watch my pointer here. And if we're looking for the um, grid reference for, the, uh, for, for this, for the youth hostel here, use a key down here to see that, we go along the corridor, we stop when we reach this square. So if we go along the corridor, we stop here and we read the number. That's five, five. We write that down. We then go up the stairs. So from the bottom and again, as soon as we get to the square that the symbol is in, we stop. We read that line eight, four. So here's your answer. Five, five, eight, four. Really easy. That really easy. You've just got to remember along the corridor, up the stairs. There's a way of checking as well, which is the point where those two lines uh, meet and intersect. So here's five, five, here's eight, four. So this point here will always be at the bottom left of the square you're looking for. Uh, if it turns out to be any other, you are incorrect. It always has to be bottom left. So that's how you can double check you've got the correct grid square. OK, so moving on, we then have six figure grid references. This is more difficult, more challenging. Um, often because there's an element of estimation and visualization here. So we now focus in on this square up here. We're now trying to find the six figure grid reference for this youth hostel. We already know four of those numbers. Remember, six figure means six number. We've already got four of them because the, the four figure grid reference. What we want to do is add a number onto the end of each of those. So five, five, something, eight, four, something. And to do that, we divide the grid square into 10 yeah, equally spaced squares. So when we move along the bottom, we start on 550. That doesn't actually say that one here, but that's 550. And we move up from one to nine and back to zero for the next number. So anything on this line would be 560. Um, and that's how you do it. Generally, uh, if anything is found in between these numbers, you go backwards. So interestingly, anything on the line is 550, but anything within this first small section here is also counted as 550. Uh, so it doesn't have to be exactly on the line, but as long as it's close, it is still zero. So anyway, we move along here, we get to 55, we write that down. We then work out that this is about halfway across. So it's therefore 555. We then go up the stairs, 84. And once again, it's, it's smack bang in the middle. 845. Now, the tricky thing about this is these grid lines are on your graph, uh, on your maps. Sorry. So you need to work this out in your head. Uh, a little trick for you. You can use a ruler. If you measure the grid square and then divide it by 10, you will have um, what you need there. And you can actually do it very accurately. Then uh, I'd recommend you do that if the maps you've got to use, uh, that's easy to do. You know, doing it on a screen, it's unlikely to have kept the same um, size and same scale. So it's probably going to be a bit more problematic. But hey, give it a go. So anyway, here's our answer to the six figure five, 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 eight, four, five. 
there we go. So that's four and six figure good references. Hopefully uh, that helps. If you still need a bit of help, there's plenty of online tutorials. Um, I know Ordnance Survey, the people who make most of the maps uh, like this, they've, they've got, a, it's called Map Zone, OS Map Zone, Google it. And there's loads of, of quizzes and drills and games and stuff that you can play to get it uh, in your head. Anyway, let's get on with it. So here's an OS map of the Swanage coastline. You saw this last lesson. Here it is again. Uh, and today we're going to be using this. So you need a copy of it. There's a copy attached, uh, which you can print, or you're just going to have to pause this one uh, and, and have a look at it. This isn't ideal. I know this is difficult, but nevertheless, we want to give it a go. Uh, try it out. Do your best. Um, and, and, and hopefully we'll see how it goes. So there we go. You've got three questions to answer here. To begin with, what natural feature is found at grid reference 0284? So use the grid lines, work that out, remember, along the corridor and up the stairs. Again, you've then got a six figure grid reference to work out what's there. And then a distance. Uh, distance, you'll notice at the top left of the map, there is a ratio, one to 50,000. So one centimeter on this uh, map is 50,000 centimeters in reality. And then you can use your conversion skills to work out what that is in meters. Uh, and kilometers if necessary. So get a ruler out, measure the distance between those two points as accurately as you can, apply that ratio to it, uh, and then convert it to a useful figure. We don't, we don't want the answer in millimeters or in centimeters. Don't need to know that something is, you know, 567,000 centimeters away from something else. That's not useful. Convert it to meters, convert it to kilometers, whatever's uh, easiest. And there we go. So spend some time on this. Pause the video now and the next slide has some more questions. Uh, I said the next slide has some more questions. No, it doesn't. It has a key here. Uh, this is going to help you. Sorry to answer some questions. Um, there we go. OK, answers. Number one, Godlingston Heath. Number two, a beacon. Hopefully you identified using the key. The um, the, the, the water area, the, the water features there. Uh, and yes, it is a beacon, uh, not a very commonly sown seen thing. And it's usually out in the water as well. Uh, it's more for sailing. And number three, approximately 1.5 kilometers. I say approximately because it's not um, accurate measuring in this way, but you can be relatively accurate. OK, so some more skills questions coming up. Answer these in full sentences in your books, please. I'll let you read through these. You don't need me to hold your hand through all of this stuff. Don't forget, explain here, meaning give reasons why you think this. So pause this video here and answer these questions in full sentences. Again, answer this in a full sentence, please. And finally, back to the Ordnance Survey map, a bit of a, a zoomed in part here. Uh, five questions to answer. Don't forget to describe means just say what you see, say what's there. Anything with why in it, you're explaining and giving reasons in those last two questions. So pause the video and get on with these in full sentences again. OK, answers. So first one, we have a cave as number one, a cliff as number two and a wave cut platform as number three. This is definitely low tide. You can see the wave cut platform. So hopefully what you can see here is we're taking knowledge that you've gained in previous lessons and we're applying them. And this is a, a great exam technique, something that is very useful to be able to do. You need if you're learning theories about the world around you, you've got to be able to work them out and see them in practice and actually identify. So that's our wave cut platform. Uh, and that is not going to be visible at high tide. And finally, uh, how do we know it's not an arch and what could we do to make it? clear it is an arch where well, we need to take the photo at a different angle it'd be easier to identify if it's an arch if we can see through um, the the full arch again that one is just testing do you really know what an arch is um, hopefully yes you know that it breaks all the way through we continue there's your four figure grid reference at the top the blue bird which hopefully you used your six figure grid reference uh, skills to find is a nature reserve Describing the environment, there are sand dunes, there's an inland freshwater ponds, for example, little sea, small streams and ditches, mixed woodland and salt marsh. You can see why this is a protected area, why people are so concerned about this area and, and 
like to conserve it and protect it because it's got so many different habitats. Apart from the wildlife associated with the range of natural habitats, there's a visitor centre, there's car parks, footpaths, including the southwest footpath. All of these things attract visitors in. And finally, why does it need to be managed? Well, to protect the many important and fragile ecosystems and wildlife habitats. Such areas can be easily damaged by people if they're not managed. For example, people trample the ground, causing footpath erosion, and the noise from tourists will also scare wildlife away. Long term, there will be a, uh, could be sorry a decrease in biodiversity. Remember, that means the number of different species there, something that's really important for the natural world around us to thrive, as it is a more, uh, popular destination for visitors, otherwise known as a honeypot site. Lots of tourists are attracted there. So that's why it needs to be managed. And on that theme, let's move on to the next slide. So I'd like you to watch this short video. It's all about the issues of managing Studland. Uh, I'd like you to answer each of these questions as you watch each section of it. I'll let you read through those first, pause the video and get your answers down. And the final part of this lesson then, looking at these answers, uh, check yours, make sure you've made any corrections you needed to. So for the first one, the sun, sea and sand in August attracts thousands of day visitors to Studland and they arrive by car. They bring in much needed money, which is spent on conservation work, and it pays for the damage that they cause by being there. It is a honeypot site and people will always want to go there. Second one, the National Trust has to pay to get rid of each kilo of litter, uh, kilogram of litter that tourists produce. It gets compacted and sent to landfill. It is the single biggest cost of running the site. Not all, not all visitors use the bins provided, leaving it on the beach or the surrounding areas. And finally, the policy is to move infrastructure back at the same rate of erosion to allow the land to erode. This is managed retreat. We're going to come back to managed retreat when we look at coastal management in the next few lessons. The policy is to not put any more sea defences in as these barriers, for example, sea walls and rock armour, groins, things you've seen on your field work uh, to erosion, they wouldn't work. The beach hut owners are directly impacted by this policy as they're an important part of the character of the beach and a major source of revenue. So they're the ones that are going to eventually need to move further away from the, the coast as it erodes further in. So there we go. Um, a good practice of some map skills and some photographic interpretation skills, plus a little bit here about management as well. Something that, like I said, the next few lessons will be all about. So thank you very much for your time. Take care and I shall speak to you soon. Goodbye.